How are we doing today, YouTube? D-Ski from D-Ski Grills back with another video. And today, we're gonna go outside, and this is a repeat from a previous video where we cleaned our 22 and a half inch kettle. So we got that kettle back restored, ready, great working condition. And as we went through the process, we realized that the igniter switch wasn't working anymore. So what I did is I went to Weber.com and ordered a replacement igniter switch. So we're gonna do an unboxing of this igniter switch, and then we're gonna do a hands-on where we go outside, install it, and hope that that's what the only problem is with getting the uh, ignition switch to work. So let's get up close, check this out really quick, see what's in the box. Now it was very fast shipping. I wanna say I got it in around three business days. I had to search for the model number, do all those things to make sure I got the right package or the right uh, switch. So it, it says kit ignition electronic performer. So let's see. So on that video, we hit the igniter switch and we had no spark. All right, so that's what the problem was. All right, so what comes with the unboxing, it looks like we have a clear instructions on how you install it. You see, I almost cut them in half, but that's okay. We'll make it work. This is exactly what I'm hoping the issue is. So what we have is the igniter button. We have a battery. We have the component that it goes into, and then we have our negative and positive wires. So this should be a very easy install. I'll take you outside. We'll do it really quick and see if that's what the difference is to get this thing lit, okay? If not, we'll go to the next step from there. But this only cost, uh, maybe it was around 20 bucks max. So not too uh, hard on your pocket. The grill again is 10 years old. So we'll take this out. We'll try to get this thing installed and see if that's what the issue is. I'll meet you outside. Okay, folks, so we're out here at the performer. Um, I had the instructions. So what it says to do first is to remove the propane tank, okay? So ultimately, the propane tank goes here. We removed that uh, last week uh, once, we were, once we realized that we were unable to get this to work. Now, when I said there was an issue, let me show you what it was. All right, this button right here, when you push it, you should hear a spark. So I'm gonna push it now. Listen for that tick, tick, tick sound where it's trying to make a spark. So listen for that. Okay, absolutely nothing happening. All right, so that's the reason for uh, getting this replacement and hoping that that's what the issue is. Now, one of my subscribers uh, asked me, did I change out the battery? And what he means is that there is a battery in this housing for this unit right here that goes right inside. I changed that out and it still didn't work. So now I'm changing out the whole mechanism in hopes that that's what the issue is. Okay, so the first thing it said was remove the uh, propane tank, which is gone. Second thing is to remove the trash basket or the charcoal bin, all right? And that is right here. All right, so the way you do that is you just lean it out and then there's just a easy latch to where you just unhook the thing. So I just did that and then we will pull this baby out. All right, easy enough. It has like an eye bolt and then just an easy hook latch that you put on there to hold this in place. So that's out the way. Next thing after that is to remove the screws on the table, all right? So let's take this off. And what we have on this table, folks, is four Phillips head screws. So we have to remove those. So we'll do that and then we'll get back together. I'll take one out real quick. And then we'll get back together once I remove the other three. Man, I'll tell you, this hasn't been taken loose in 10 years. I haven't taken this thing off apart since I uh, installed it 10 years ago. So some of these things can be a little tricky, but we'll get it. All right, again, so we have a total of four Phillips heads. We'll get back together once I get these all taken off and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, folks, we're back. I just removed the four Phillips head screws. Now we're gonna take the table off. That's what it says to do next, so let's do that. Now, 
the good thing about this, removing this gives you access to the work zone. So I'm gonna put this down and we'll start the next step. All right, back to our handy dandy manual. Once you remove the table, um, you're supposed to disconnect the ignition wires. So let me bring you in close. Um, I'll bring you in on this back view and show you that. Next thing it asks us to do is disconnect the ignition wires. So let's do that now. We have our black wire here on top and our white on the bottom, all right? So those, are, those have been disconnected. These wires may work, it may not be an issue at all. So I'm thinking about just changing out this whole module and see if that's what the issue is. But anyway, we've taken these loose. Next step is gonna to be to remove this uh, component so we can replace it with the new one. All right, so what we have here is the push button itself. I'm going to screw this thing counterclockwise to get it to come loose, easy enough. Here's the uh, new battery that I put in that uh, my subscriber had asked me about as well. So hopefully we can use this thing, but this was the battery. So we got the push button itself out. You have a flange here that you need to loosen up so you can remove the back module. All right, so we're taking that loose and the module comes right out the back. All right, so that's what you have. You have your module, you have your flange, and you have your button. So let's replace those right now, see if that's what um, the issue was. And if not, we'll have to move on to the next step and change out uh, some different components that are a part of the igniter uh, switch. All right, so let's put these down and get the new ones. All right, we'll start off by putting this in place. Okay, so I'm putting the housing right back into the, uh, a lot, the slotted holes that you see lines up easy enough right in there here's our new button and our new flange as well as our new battery that we won't use we'll use the one that i put in a few days ago and hope that that was what the issue was okay so we got that in there there's our battery now we're just going to come right back with our flange nut and just screw that in place. This is how you lock in your button and make sure it doesn't move around on you. All right, so we have that snug. We're gonna come back with our uh, push button itself. And I'm just turning this thing clockwise until it gets tight and I know it's where it needs to be. Okay, so our assembly is in place easy enough. We're gonna go back, plug in our wires. Let me bring you in again and show you that. Okay, folks, so now we're back on the back side. We put the module in place. We put on the igniter switch. The battery is in place, and now we need to plug our wires back in. So easily enough, you have black to black and white to white, all right? So I'm going to stay with the existing wiring because I really feel like the issue was the module. I know I have the new wires, but let's just do that really quick and just see, okay? So black to black, let's go right on in, push that in place, snaps right in, and white to white. Easy enough. All right, now what we're gonna do next, folks, is we're gonna go ahead and install the propane tank, put it back in place. And what I'll do is bring you back over here, show you that. We wanna do a test run before we uh, put everything back in place. So let me grab a propane tank real quick. So I misspoke on a previous video and um, referred to this as one gallon. What I really meant is one pound. So these are your one pound bottles. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and get that screwed in place. And that will be pretty easy to do. You go counterclockwise. All right, so that is um, in place and you don't wanna go super tight, you just wanna do snug tight. Now, if this baby is working, we should be able to get fire by turning this to the left and that is turning on the propane which I hear it, and then hitting the igniter switch. Listen to there. Look at there, folks. Tell you what, that was so good. I'm going to bring you back and show it to you again. 
first off, here we are. We have fire. We have fire. So what we needed was to it, replace our igniter switch. Uh, again, it was about 20 bucks on Weber.com. I'll turn this back off real quick. All right, we'll do it again. Listen for the click sound. First, we'll turn on the gas. Gas is on, listen for the click. Here we go. Done. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to my channel. Let others know what D-Ski Grills is up to. And as always, at D-Ski Grills, grilling is not a pastime, it's a passion. Thanks. So ultimately, folks, I am glad that we were able to get together, fix this problem that we noticed about a week or two ago, and make sure we have all the full functionality of our Weber kettle. So now our gas assist works, easy way of getting your coals lit. And as always, I appreciate you for joining me. I'll catch you on the next video. But hey, that's how you change it out.